you would dominate in a beep test. You cannot get that quality from a carbon fiber plated cushion shoe. If I Hey guys, welcome back to the Never Not Good Run channel. My name is Milai and today I am very happy to bring you my final review of one of my favorite shoes, the Takumi Sen 7 from Adidas. So in my first impression video that uh, I made right here, uh, which was less than like two minutes, so it was a really short video. I didn't really talk about that shoe that much. It was more like a commercial kind of video. So uh, here I am bringing you the final review. So those who do not know about this shoe, this shoe, the Takumi Sen series, this is Adidas's version of a traditional racing flat shoe. So like even though uh, we are in the era of cushion shoes, uh, how every company is competing to make a shoe that has a lot of cushion yet still fast this is a more traditional racing flat kind of shoe so so you cannot expect a lot of cushion from this shoe but what you can uh, expect is a lot of speed uh, and lots of fun running in my opinion from this shoe so just like I said right now this shoe does not have a lot of cushion so I would say it is a shoe more for elite to even professional runners who still prefer that ground contact feeling underneath their foot while they run um, and also riding that speed and feeling that speed directly through your feet um, but for runners, uh, mediocre runners like me uh, and for I guess maybe most people I would say this shoe is more for um, short speed workouts so for me it would be from like 200 meters to maybe all the way up to two mile repeats something like that um, and all the way up to like a 10k time trial um, but not not any longer than that because um, like I said this shoe does not have that much cushion uh, it will definitely destroy your legs um, the first time I went out running in the Takumi Sen 6 I have here uh, my legs were totally destroyed the next day and the same thing happened when I went out uh, on hill reps uh, wearing these shoes uh, one week ago after like a week break okay so let's quickly go through the details of this shoe starting off with the outsole so here I have the Takumi Sen 6 here is the 7 so basically they are almost exactly identical, exactly the same. Uh, so they have these uh, nubs, rubber nubs here, and the forefoot, very front of the forefoot area is their traditional continental rubber, which is used for Formula One cars. So I mean, you know that is gonna create uh, amazing traction. So this shoe really grabs the ground each time you kick into it, allowing you to kick into that speed. So that's one reason this shoe uh, is such a great shoe to run in uh, fast speed and uh, I have uh, around a hundred miles in the Takumi Sen 6 but um, there you cannot see almost anywhere uh, from these nubs at all so um, I'm pretty sure it's uh, it's quite a durable shoe uh, the 6 and both the 7 I think it will easily last up to 400 miles or even more Okay, so let's go to the midsole. Um, so here again, I have the six and the seven here. Um, again, these are almost almost completely identical. Um, I couldn't find the details for the midsole for the six, but the seven, um, it has a nine millimeter drop, uh, 25.5 millimeters in the heel, 16.5 millimeters in the toe. So that's a nine millimeter drop. And uh, this six has a five millimeter drop. So I guess there's a little bit, uh, a few millimeters more cushioning in this shoe, the seven. Uh, however, it still is, uh, it still feels like there is not that much cushion all throughout the shoe. Um, so up from the heel all the way to around the forefoot area is their light strike material. And from the bottom of the forefoot all the way to the toe is their boost. So a little bit more protection in your forefoot area um, because it is a fast shoe you will uh, use your forefoot area a lot for that final toe off. So what was interesting about the midsole and the feeling about uh, these shoes is for the six um, 
it almost felt like there was an extra layer of boost right underneath your forefoot. So each time you land, it was almost like a, there was like a sweet spot uh, that makes it feel so uh, nice just to land that on the, on the forefoot area and uh, supports your toe off. Uh, as for the 7, it um, although it is totally identical, uh, it didn't have that feeling of a uh, boost underneath your forefoot. So you really couldn't feel that like sweet spot kind of feeling with this shoe. But um, I'll get to that later. I think there was a reason for that as well. Now what is the biggest reason for you to buy the 7 rather than the 6? I think it was all about the upper. Now uh, what makes this shoe really stand out is the lightness of this shoe. The 6 for a men's size 9 it is 7 ounces while the 7 uh, for a men's size 9 at least according to the website it is only 6 ounces. For my men's size uh, 7.5 it was only 5.8 ounces. 5.8 ounces. Uh, that is that is crazy. It, almost feels like there's nothing on your foot. Um, that is a little bit of an exaggeration. It just still does feel like there's a shoe on your foot. But um, So how do they shed off that weight from the shoe? Uh, it is all in the upper in my opinion. So um, the 6, uh, they have the cellar mesh upper and the 7 it says they also use a cellar mesh. But um, I found on one website to describe the upper for the 7 as a super light single layer cellar mesh. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's the proper name for this upper. However, um, obviously it is a really thin layer of a mesh upper. So uh, I don't know if you guys could see it, but you could see right through it. Um, my fingers, maybe, can you? And um, it almost feels like uh, the Nike uh, Vapor Weave, which is used for the Vaporfly Next Percent. So it's almost uh, like a flimsy, maybe not the best word to describe it, but um, it is really a thin material. And while this shoe, the 6, uh, when you put your foot in this shoe, um, it does feel like you have a, like a thick layer of an upper holding down your foot. While this shoe, when you put your foot in this shoe, it almost feels like, um, a th it feels like this thin material is wrapping around your foot rather than like holding down your foot. Ah, uh, uh, I have no other way to. Anyway, so the upper, very, very breathable, very thin layer. Um, if it didn't have these uh, extra reinforcements, these strips uh, crossing the upper, like creating a zebra kind of pattern, I think your foot might just rip a hole in it, uh, which was also the case for uh, the vapor flies for some people, I guess. Uh, but because it has this, uh, these strips, I think it makes it uh, just a little bit more durable um, to stand those like hard, heavy duty poundings because you are gonna run in a lot of fast speed with these shoes. So on top of the material of the upper being extremely light and thin, uh, they did also remove some padding from around the heel collar. So uh, I hope you can see here, it is very minimal, the padding around your heel collar. So um, it does compromise the hold of your heel and it does um, concern you when you put your foot into the shoe. However, uh, once you start running, um, surprisingly, it doesn't bother you at all. So um, I guess uh, it's not a huge problem. The heel cup still is a pretty uh, stiff heel cup. So it does hold your uh, heel uh, right in that position. So no concerns there. Now because they were able to make this shoe an extremely light shoe uh, using this light and uh, flexible material for the upper, I think overall it became a softer and easier shoe to run in. So what I mean by that is uh, the transition from the initial ground contact all the way to the toe off has become way more easier because it's flexible and you could get less. So let's say this is how much you need to step into the shoe for the toe off. It's easier to get into the position, this position, compared to the Takumi Sen 6. Um, so for the 6, because this is a more stiffer shoe, 
you need a little bit more energy to get into this position so you really need to kick into the shoe uh, before your toe off and so maybe maybe just maybe that is the reason it feels like there's an extra layer of boost underneath the forefoot of the Takumi Sen 6 compared to the 7 and because it's easier to get into that position because this is a softer and more flexible shoe you really they really didn't need to add that like layer of extra boost underneath the forefoot because it just transitions so smoothly and you don't have to uh, protect uh, the forefoot as much as you do compared to the Takumi Sen 6. Uh, so one like personal minor drawback from the shoe is the shortness of the tongue. Um, so comparing it to the tongue of the 6, I think you could see it's a little bit shorter there. Um, so it barely just covers you, uh, protects you from the shoe knot here. And when you put your foot into the shoe, your foot kind of drags the tongue uh, inside. Even though the tongue is gusseted, it just follows you into the shoe. And it's really um, kind of uncomfortable. Um, and it's... Uh, yeah, uh, that happens every time. Uh, I tried to wear the shoe although uh, once you start running in the shoe it doesn't bother you at all but it's just that when you wear the shoe when you put your foot in the shoe it's always a little bit of a struggle um, getting the tongue in the right position and all that so who is this shoe for if you are an elite runner a professional runner who still loves that ground contact feel where you could really kick into the ground and feel yourself um, accelerating into that speed. Of course, uh, this is totally a shoe for you. And I do know some people who still run marathons in these shoes. Uh, although, personally, I think that is crazy. Um, and it's crazy to think that up to like a few years ago, that was still the norm. Um, but um, now that we have all those cushion shoes with carbon fiber plates, I cannot imagine running uh, like a half half marathon in this shoe. Um, but if you still are an elite professional runner who has those strong legs already and is ready to take that beating of the leg. And even if you are not an uh, elite professional runner, if you are anybody who does those speed workouts, I would definitely uh, recommend this shoe. I think everybody should have at least one kind of shoe uh, these racing flat kind of shoes uh, for the speed workouts. Because this shoe is a very low stack height shoe and it supports your running more uh, based on your anatomical structure of your foot and your leg. So how you are supposed to run uh, based on your bone and muscle structure. Um, it really allows you to run in a running form that you are supposed to run in. And because it is very light, it will widen your stride lengths and it will uh, make your gait cycle become bigger. So it will really remind your body how your running form should be. So especially for runners who are just about to start those uh, speed workouts, uh, I would say this shoe is definitely for you as well because um, if you're just doing long, slow jogs, I think your running form becomes a little bit more smaller um, and you forget how it is to run dynamic in a large uh, running form with large arm strings, large gait cycle. Um, but this shoe, because it's so light and it allows you to run really fast and fun to run fast in, uh, it will remind your body what it's like to really run uh, big. So like even for runners who are in a slump and just cannot enjoy running anymore, um, just come back to this shoe and just go out for a simple run run fast with nothing on your mind um, it's such a fun shoe to run fast in so uh, i definitely recommend it for almost every single runner and it's also good looking so why not by the way i got a comment in my previous video saying this shoe might be good for a beep test i cannot agree more with this traction uh, with this speed and of course it has stability uh, you would dominate in a beat test you cannot get that quality from a carbon fiber plated cushion shoe this shoe would be amazing for a beat test if you want to spend 160 dollars to dominate in the beat test 
go ahead. Also, if you are a runner who used to uh, mostly train on the tracks and is about to transition into road running, but is kind of addicted to that feeling of the spikes uh, kicking into the tracks and you are like a, a traction spike fetish, uh, I think this shoe will satisfy you very much. Yes. And that's about it for my final review of one of my favorite racing flat shoes, the Adidas Takumi Sen 7. Uh, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Please uh, like, uh, press that like button if you like the video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Um, recently, I know I haven't been totally consistent with my video uploading, but um, I'll keep trying the best I can. Um, and that's about it guys, see you soon again. Uh, and don't forget, there is never not a good run. See you guys, bye. Ah, uh, I have no better way to describe, maybe a thick layer of plastic wrap. Uh, no, that's not, that's not right. Um,